Hello, this is Elder High Priestess Tehila from the Covenant of Open Mind, and you're watching Wicca 101 Abridged. Hail and welcome. The topic this time is on spells, what they are, how they work, and what types of things can be done through magic. Spells are the means by which witches enforce their will upon the world. They capture the desire and the intent of the witch as she sends her energy out into the cosmos uh, where deity or fate will deign to see it done. For Wiccans, deity is seen as having the ultimate trump card over spells, which is why Wiccans will work with aspects of deity who support the type of working to be done. Uh, Wiccans hope that by having a strong connection, a strong enough relationship with deity, um, that their will may be favored over the will of others and enforced speedily and successfully. Not all Wiccans believe in deity. Uh, most believe in some kind of fate, viewing humans as threads in a tapestry. Um, spells are meant to manipulate that which does the weaving, whether that's a deity uh, or something else. Um, spells are similar to prayers in effect, but much different in essence. Um, prayers are like vague wishes that deity or fate or the powers that be pro-offer some solution to a problem of its own volition. Um, Wiccans may also say prayers, say thank God or thank goddess or probably most commonly thank the gods. Uh, Wiccans may pray before meals, before going to sleep, upon awakening. There's definitely no one set way to do things in one's personal practice, and there's a lot of variation. Um, spells are less about wishing upon a star and more about uh, willing something into being. Um, they're right on the edge between the left and right-handed paths. Um, of power and wisdom, if you've heard of that. On one hand, um, you know, you want to trust your gods to look out for you, trust in deity to do right by you, and if you lead a good life and a wise life, then so shall it be. That's the right-handed path. Uh, and yet, on the other hand, um, it's not necessarily wise to leave all issues to an external power to resolve uh, that neglects your own internal power. And at some point, you need to take matters into your own hands and commit to a change. Seek a new path or embrace and make do with that which is given to you. Um, it's said in Wicca that herbs are to heal the body and spells are to heal the soul. They're not some fictionalized and sensational technique for blasting away enemies <laughs> with fireballs. Uh, in fact, spells are not supernatural in nature at all. Uh, they are quite natural. The definition of nature, uh, the synchronicity and harmony that occurs naturally in all things uh, due to the very fact that fundamentally we're all one. Uh, don't forget that magic is what happens when the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual come together in unity and transcend mortal existence, bringing people to a place outside of time and space and reality um, where that which is imaginatory is real, has real tangible effects, and can be utilized to great good or ill. Uh, there are three key things required to do a spell, to perform magic of any kind, and they are the following. So you must believe that what you are doing will work. There is no way to scientifically prove that magic works because the very nature of magic is such that it will not work if you are not absolutely certain that it will. Setting up an experiment to demonstrate the efficacy of magic will always return the result that magic is not real and does not work. This is because the measurement itself interferes with the magic and prevents it from succeeding. And for those more scientifically minded folks out there who think this is a cop out, let me remind you about the quantum mechanical properties of matter. Particles exist across many points of space and time at once until they are measured. Once you try to measure which state it's in, it picks one. So literally taking a picture of a particle will ensure it always looks like a point and not a wave. A prime example of how things that function on a very low level in the quantum realm um, 
cannot always be subjected to the methods and rules of our physical realm of the macroscopic world. Particles literally experience different physical laws than we do. And likewise, the physical laws are different when you get to the scale of space. So with spells, uh, there can be no doubt whatsoever. It's not a belief that it will succeed. It's not a thought. It's a sense, a feeling with physical sensations and a deep metaphysical sense of knowing. Uh, you have to know it will work, and so it shall. This is often referred to as the intent or knowing with certainty how a spell will work in a specific way. Okay, so the second thing you need, uh, so the first thing you need is the intent. We'll talk a little bit more about all three of these things together at the end. So the second thing you need uh, is that you must be emotionally invested or deeply care about the outcome of the spell. People who offer to do spells for strangers, if they're very empathic, that'll work, but most of them are probably scammers. <laughs> um, the most powerful items are the ones that you create uh, that you charge or consecrate for yourself. Uh, the most, the, you know, the greatest asset in your life is your own ability to magically interact with the world and never let anyone convince you that you depend on them to do such work. That will never be true. Christians will tell you it. Jews will tell you it. You know, everyone will say, Rabbi has to give the final word, and that's just not a Wiccan perspective. So, um, there's no such thing as being born without the ability to do magic. Uh, like singing and athletics or maths or, you know, other related skills, yes, you can be born, you know, inherently better at it than others. You can be born with an advantage, okay? I'm a slow runner. I've always been a slow runner. I'm never going to be a ma an athlete. I've always been a mathlete, you know, and that's, and that's probably always going to be the case. But does that mean that I have to be overweight or out of shape? No, I can still you know, put the time and effort in to make myself fit or conform to a certain standard, and I do, right? So that's the same thing with spiritual intelligence. You know, just as with any form of intelligence, it can be trained and increased over time. Uh, and some are better at it than others, but eventually with enough ritual, with enough practice and discipline, you can train your spiritual intelligence and you can come to per perceive of things and be aware of things that are not, you know, quite as real, you know, that are, that are more abstract and, and that exist in the magical world. And, and like all things though, no change will come about in someone unless they truly and deeply desire that change. And that is the nature of, of this component of spells. It's called the desire. You know, a good example is, you know, so you can't lose weight unless you really want it, right? Uh, you can't just half-heartedly wish that you fit into the world's modern interpretation of aesthetics. You have to also want the lifestyle that goes along with it, the fitness, the activity, the eating of healthy foods. There is no magic in this world that can violate the laws of physics. You must be willing to back the spell up, which leads us to the last component, commitment. Commitment is about being willing to go the distance and do the work required. You make a plan, you log your calories, you exercise, and every day you do a spell in the morning that will help keep you on track and make the weight loss effective. You visualize the end objective, the lifestyle and the fitness level that you desire, and you visualize it so fully that it feels like you are dreaming, trapped in your present state, in a dream from which you will awaken into a beautiful new being, all in accordance with your intent and desire. So, so when you feel the magic strongly enough, then the current state of things will feel wrong and the commitment will be something you're compelled to do. And that's really the, the purpose of magic, is to help you with that commitment phase. But the commitment has to be there or the spell will not work. And, and actually, the same concept is found in Christianity in the saying, God helps those who help themselves, right? So, not a new concept. Um, now, the intent, uh, the spell itself, like how will the spell physically manifest and when will it come into effect? You know, get really specific in what you want to happen. Uh, the desire, okay, that's the emotional pull that draws you to do the working and the commitment, the willingness to do what is required to back it up. 
Uh, so those, those are the three things required. So note that this means for curses and dark magic, you would have to be willing to literally kill someone, to literally stab them in the chest or whatever, you know. You have to be willing to literally do it if you want your magic to metaphysically do it. Okay, and that is possible. You can affect someone in that way, but it's very, it requires a lot of desire, commitment, and, you know. So when we say um, metaphysically, what we mean is that magic is sent out via and received through the part of yourself that exists in a greater sense. It comes through your soul, which many throughout the ages have described as a mirror image of the body, but in a non-physical way. So they treat the physical self as energy which has some interactions uh, with other energy on, a, on some very small scale that is nearly impossible to see or detect with instruments, with modern day instruments, maybe in the future. Chakras uh, are energy centers of all varieties. Uh, the aura, as some call it, all of these are different descriptions for the metaphysical self. Uh, if our bodies are the physical component of existence and our minds are the emotional, then our metaphysical selves, uh, that is the spiritual component of our existence. So Wiccans most commonly use the traditional seven chakras, the root at the base or the feet of the spine, the sacral chakra, um, that's in the genital region, the solar plexus or tummy chakra, uh, the heart chakra, throat, third eye, and crown. And spell work is usually done from the tummy chakra down as the lower chakras are our energy source and that which connects us to this physical realm and that's where we want the change to happen in the physical realm so it just makes sense to use those chakras um, when a change is desired on this plane of existence um, it it makes sense to go back to your roots and to ground with the earth you know so so this can bring great strength and wisdom of course uh, the sacral chakra uh, that can be used as well that's often used for eris mancy um, head over into the magical discipline series if you're interested in that i'm publishing a video along with this one. Um, and and uh, Arismancy is any, any kind of love magic the sacral chakra is good for. Um, it can also be used for self-love and healing and protection and all sorts of things like that. The tummy chakra is the most common used when doing any form of spell casting, which is to say sending energy out into the universe. I've heard this, pro this called bubble casting from a few sources, but apparently there is a coven or a lineage staking a claim on that terminology. So um, I'm gonna try to switch to calling it chakra casting, which is a little more literal, I think, anyway. Um, but I have discussed it. I'm not gonna take down past videos, but I am gonna try to refer to it as chakra casting just to respect their claim. Uh, though, I, like I said, I've heard it from many sources, so you can choose what you're going to do. Anyway, so the process, no, no matter what you call it, is simple. You send energy out from one of the chakras, typically the tummy, uh, again, usually a lower chakra. The energy that you send out carries with it intent and desire. So that's like the guts of the spell. Um, the spell begins to manifest in the universe while you follow it up with your commitment until it is completed. And then the energy, uh, you know, pops around you like a bubble or a sphere of some kind. There are all sorts of visualizations you can use. And then it either remains around you as a shield, if that's the purpose. You know, when you send it out, it can form a bubble around you. That's where the term bubble casting comes from. Um, or you can send it out into the world and it flies out into the cosmos and carries your intent and desire out with it. Yeah. Uh, and the, the reason why someone might use a shield during spell work is to generate a lot of energy and store it around them and then send it out all at once because the idea is if you send it out at once, it has more speed and that allows it to be more effective. You know, that's what people say. Um, stalker casting is pretty much the means by which all magic is released into the world except for chaos magic and death magic. So actually it's the way that all life magic is sent out into the world. <laughs> As a side note, um, some people use the heart chakra or the throat chakra to perform casting 
Uh, the third eye and crown are really not meant for that type of use and are mostly left for invocation work. People like have gotten hurt trying to use those, so please don't. Um, the heart chakra is often used for empaths, um, people who feel a connection to all things around them. Um, but using the upper two chakras, it's very emotionally draining and people can hurt themselves. The third chakra is good for commanding um, spells, manipulation, binding spells. Um, it can be exhausting again, to use the throat chakra too much. So keep that in mind. Obviously, there are many ways to interpret the use of these chakras, and there are even other ways to characterize or categorize the metaphysical self. Um, shamanism views it as an aura and considers that one interacts with the auras of others through spirit guides, specifically through guides, not directly. Um, animism also uses spirit guides. Uh, there are forms uh, which use fairies, demons, and angels as well. Um, and in these systems, there may or may not be anything like a chakra from which to cast. So there are a lot of variances in the different types of Wiccan paths and the different ways that people do spells. But um, this idea of chakra casting is pretty central to Wiccan spell work. In summary, spells are not supernatural, but are more something we do to align our physical, emotional, and spiritual selves so that we may more effectively achieve our goals. Uh, in order for them to work, you must believe they will work, and note precisely how, that's the intent. Uh, you must have a strong emotional desire to see them work, okay, that's the desire, and you must back up the spell with physical action, that's the commitment. And spells are cast from the metaphysical self, which can take the form of chakras or spirit guides or auras or any number of imagined things. It's just a way to visualize energy, so it doesn't really matter what you pick. Um, the energy is the, is the same no matter what. <laughs> and um, once you visualize the energy being sent forth and visualize the goal coming to fruition, make sure you never lose sight of your commitment to your goals and your will be done. And that wraps up this discussion on what spells are. Next time we will discuss we will discuss how to craft them. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and from all of us here at the Covenant of the Open Mind, blessed be.